The state capitol contains many reminders of the state's role in the Civil War, particularly in the Battle of Gettysburg. With the 150th anniversary of that battle approaching, Brian Pease of the Minnesota Historical Society discusses the state's role. Here in the governor's reception room, we have a lot of very famous Civil War paintings. One of the most famous is the depiction of the first Minnesota at the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863. It was the most veteran uh, organization within the Union Army. Our governor, Alexander Ramsey, had been in Washington, D.C. and volunteered 1,000 men to fight for the Union Army once Fort Sumter was fired upon. And this 1,000 men had seen two years of war by the time this battle took place. Winfield Hancock, who was their Corps commander, ordered William Colville, the colonel of the 1st Minnesota, to have his men fix bayonets and charge the Confederate line. Well. These men were only about 262 men, just less than 300 men were ordered to confront and charge full force a group of about 1,200 Confederate soldiers. And so within the 15 minutes of that charge, the 1st Minnesota obeyed that order, stopped the advancement of the Confederate forces, but lost 82% of their men. That event alone, many historians believe, helped save the Battle of Gettysburg and possibly turn the tide for the, the Union Army as well as the United States of America. When you look at the first Minnesota at Gettysburg painting, you'll see the color bearer um, basically right in the front of the charge, but behind him is Colonel William Colville, who was that officer in charge of the first Minnesota at Gettysburg. And you can see he's leading the men onward, and shortly after this scene would have been depicted, he was wounded twice. Just the way the first Minnesota was being attacked, behind them, almost on three sides, were the Confederate forces. So, within a few minutes of that charge, they were being fired upon from three sides. So that's what really you know, helped decimate the numbers of the 1st Minnesota at that battle. In a corridor just outside of the State Capitol Rotunda is one of Minnesota's most important artifacts from the Civil War, and that's the flagstaff that was used by the 1st Minnesota at Gettysburg. You have to remember they were there for two days of the fighting of that three-day battle. At the second day of that uh, battle, they made their famous charge where they lost about 80% of their men. And on the third day, they were pretty much centered right in the middle of where Pickett's charge took place. And that's where this flagstaff really became an important artifact or an important part of that story of Gettysburg. As the Confederates were advancing towards Cemetery Ridge, the first Minnesota men were firing and there was uh, uh, the battle going on and the, the lines of Confederates were kind of meandering and working their way up to the top of that ridge. And the color bearer for the first Minnesota waving the flag was hit in the hand by a bullet, and that also splintered the flagstaff. So when that dropped, another soldier from the first Minnesota, uh, Henry O'Brien, picked up that flag and started running toward the advancing Confederates. Well, the flag was kind of flimsy, so he broke off the bottom part of that flagstaff, flung that aside, and then advanced toward the enemy. Well, as the other men from the 1st Minnesota that saw that happening, they charged after their new color bearer as he was advancing into the Confederate lines. Well, by the end of that battle, the Confederates, of course, had retreated. The Minnesota had their flagstaff, but only half of that. And one of the important parts of that battle was there was a battle flag from the 20th Virginia that was captured by another Minnesota soldier. And uh, the bottom half, half of that flagstaff was removed from that Virginia flagstaff and then spliced to this flagstaff so you have one long flagpole once again to carry that regimental flag or that national color in this instance. The Historical Society is conducting several tours that will focus on the state's role in the Civil War. These are the times and the dates of those tours and you can call the Historical Society for more information. That number is 651-296-1735.